We all are experiencing stress at work, with our families, with our significant others, maybe even with ourselves, with our goals that we have. And it would be nicer, we'd have happier lives if we had less stress. Hello, welcome back to Psychology Works. Getting a little silly here. We're talking about stress today. Two things about stress. What causes it? In other words, what's the recipe for stress? And two, what can we do to reduce stress? That's probably the most important one, but you gotta kinda understand what it is to be able to know how the strategy to reduce it works. So let me show you psychologically what causes stress so you will understand what's going on. So we're gonna use a little model here, of course. So first of all, we have this, the level of difficulty of the expected task. So that's the first variable, the level of difficulty of the expectation itself. So let's suppose, uh, we'll use a work example. Let's suppose you worked in some office and you were supposed to get some report done. Or let's say you're a student and you have to finish some essay uh, at some level of difficulty. So you would first, in your mind, you have an idea of what you're gonna assign the level of difficulty of that expected task. So a 10 would be the most difficult, zero would be not difficult at all, maybe even super easy. And so it's very subjective because you're supposed to think for you, what would the level of difficulty be? Maybe for some people math is easy, some people it's hard, you know, you get the point. So let's look at our examples here. Let's say the essay that you have to write uh, your average at writing essays, you don't have a lot of time, you should have been working on it already, and so you would say, well, the level of difficulty of finishing that essay in that amount of time, I'll give it an eight. The second variable is this, the ability to meet the expectation. Now, let's suppose you, you assess your ability to meet the expectation and you say your ability is about a five. As you can see, the level of difficulty is higher than the ability to meet the expectation. That's gonna cause stress. That is the definition. That's the recipe of stress. You have an expectation and you feel as if there's a high chance that you will not meet the expectation. And the bigger this gap, the higher the level of difficulty or the lower your ability to meet it and the gap gets bigger, stress increases. The closer these two get together, stress decreases. So let's say you are an adult and you have to do third grade level math and you're fine at math. The level of difficulty is not that hard. The ability that you have to, to do that task is high or as high or higher than the level of difficulty, you're not gonna feel stressed. It's gonna affect your thoughts, your beliefs about what's gonna happen. So for example, if the level of difficulty is an eight, and let's say your ability to meet it is also eight in this case, your beliefs are going to be, I'll be fine, I'm gonna be able to do this, I'm gonna uh, please the people, I'm going to get the advantages, you know, whatever it is that you're going to get out of meeting the expectations. You can also see what your thoughts will be as the gap widens between these two. It's usually thoughts like, I'm not going to be able to make it. They're going to be upset. I'm going to get fired. I'm going to get a low grade. Someone's going to be upset. I'm going to look stupid. All of these fears of what it means if you don't meet the expectations. We all, as humans, have this inherent uh, something biological where we want to meet the expectations of others because we want approval. We want to be liked. We want to be accepted. We don't want to be isolated. We don't want to be ostracized. And the way to avoid being avoided, <laughs> the way to avoid being ostracized is to meet the expectations of the people around us, or it could uh, our pay could depend on it. Our future could depend on it. So the higher the stakes will also increase or decrease the level of stress. So that would probably be the third variable is what is the price to pay if you don't meet the expectation? And then some of it might be psychological in your mind and maybe not even accurate. But if you think the stakes are high and you're going to lose out on something super important to you, 
if you don't meet the expectation, the stress will be even worse. So now we know what causes stress. Take a look at your own life for a minute. Stop and think. What is something that's stressing me out? Give it a rating. How hard is that task to meet? And then think to yourself, what is my ability, the way I perceive my ability to meet that expectation? And notice, if you're stressed about it, there is probably going to be that difference in those two numbers. How do we fix it? We've got two options. If you are interested in this video, you feel like you're getting something out of it, please take a second, hit like, hit subscribe if you'd like to. It really does help the channel. It uh, boosts the views and then other people can also benefit from it. Also, leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think of some of these ideas, either positive or negative. How do we fix it? We've got two options. One is to assess if our thoughts are accurate. If we're thinking to ourselves, oh no, if I don't meet the expectation, all hell's going to break loose. It's going to be a catastrophe. You want to rethink that. You want to say, am I over-exaggerating? Am I jumping to false conclusions? Would it really be that bad? If the person's disappointed, will they survive it? Will it be okay? Can I live with that? And you try to reframe it and you look at it in a more realistic way. And oftentimes that will lower the stress because you realize logically you maybe aren't going to meet the expectation, but it's okay. It'll pass. The, the, the fallout will pass. Or in this reframe, you would realize, you know what, I studied for this test, or I am good at that subject, or I've got plenty of time. The amount of time it takes to do that is plenty of time to get it done, and I'll get it done. And so this belief of, I'm not going to be able to meet the expectation, you start to realize that that is the false belief. So you want to look at it logically. Okay, so we've got the reframing. This is called cognitive restructuring. It's part of cognitive therapy. You know, when we say CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, that is the cognitive piece. So now let's look at the behavioral piece of solving this issue. That would be problem solving. You want to assess, am I in the right situation? If you're in a place where the expectations realistically, when you're looking at it logically, are too high and you keep being unable to meet it, you have to start to rethink, what are my actual goals in life? Is this a happy life? Is this the way I should be living? If I keep finding that the ability I need to be is not what I am and come to some acceptance of your own limitations, it's great to dream big, but you also want to make those big dreams within some semblance of reality based on what you could actually accomplish. Now, I realize that's a big step for some people. If you're at work and you're stressed with work and you start to think, well, maybe I need to change my career, that could sound like crazy talk to somebody who's put in so much time, but maybe you don't need to change the whole career. Maybe you need to do some problem solving and figure out how do I make the expectations realistic? How do I talk to the people at work and figure out some way to either say no, if they keep putting tasks on my plate, that becomes impossible. I can't meet those tasks. I'm going to have to somehow learn to let some of those tasks go, get them off my plate, or restructure who's in charge of what, or sit down and have a talk with people, help them understand why what they're expecting is unrealistic. Maybe they're the ones that are being unrealistic, and you're going to have some kind of discussion with them about how to change what they're expecting. And sometimes that might be possible. I realize sometimes it might not be possible. Maybe I'm dreaming. Maybe I'm the one with the crazy talk here. But it's something to think about. If you continue to be in a situation where the expectations are here and your ability to meet them is here and you're not doing anything about it, you just keep pedaling faster and faster and faster, not getting any sleep, always worried, always anxious, that is a recipe for all kinds of problems. High blood pressure, heart disease, you get that cortisol dripping over and over for long periods of time, and it's not good for you. Now, I know this one short video is not going to revolutionize your life, but I hope you will pay attention. And as you go about the next week or so, be thinking about what I've said. Notice when you're stressed, look at it in this way, and 
go through these two different strategies on how you can possibly reduce your stress. So how about you? I'd love to hear what kinds of experiences you've had with stress. And if you've tried any of these ideas, or maybe you have some other ideas that I haven't mentioned, or if you see flaws or something in what I've said that seems wrong, I'd love to hear your comments on that also. So if you haven't already, please click like, click subscribe if you would want to see more content like this. And until then, this is Dr. Scott Greenaway saying take care, take it easy, and remember, psychology works. Goodbye. I'm still here. <laughs>